Hi, my name is Daniel Wickman and today I'm reviewing the Gembay EF200 LED Continuous Light thanks to Protoc. At Kantara Studios we recently completed a video for Tier Australia in support of their Live On One Planet campaign and in conjunction with poet John Macero. As part of this project we filmed at the Californian Redwood Forest just outside of Beach Forest in the Victorian Otways. Due to this remote location we found ourselves needing to find a kit that was flexible, bright and compact whilst also drawing minimal power as a major consideration for this shoot was the lack of on-site power and our need to run everything from a single generator. Having come from only using trusted HMI and tungsten lights, this was a daunting transition. Thankfully, Protog provided us with a fantastic setup which included the Gembay EF200 LED continuous light. Weighing in at 3.5 kilos and a little under 50 centimeters, the Gembay EF200 packs a lot of punch for both its size and draw. The unit itself only draws 200 watts, yet thanks to the single SMD LED chip is capable of outputting an equivalent level of light to a 2000 watt tungsten light. The colour temperature is closer to that of a HMI at around 5600 Kelvin, with 11 incremental dimming steps located via a dimmer switch at the rear of the unit. The light itself has a similar quality to that of a 2K Blondie, yet without an internal ability to spot or flood. Reshaping the light can be achieved by the standard S-mount connector with a snoot, a wide or narrow reflector, a Chimera style softbox of any shape or size. However, not having this as an internal function is one of this light's few drawbacks. In our controlled studio environment, one metre from our subject with our trusty 5D Mark III set to ISO 160, 1 50th of a shutter and 5600 Kelvin, we tested the variation of each incremental dimming step, moving from the lowest setting, which we called step 11, up to the highest setting, which we call step one. Through our testing, we found that each increment added roughly half a stop of light from the 11th step through to the eighth step. From the eighth step through to the fifth step, each increment added roughly one third of a stop of light. And lastly, from the fifth step to the first step, each increment provided roughly one tenth of a stop of light. To evaluate the colour shift across each increment, we used an x right colour checker and DaVinci Resolve's colour matcher tool to determine the various colour shifts across each increment. It's important to note that the colour matcher and Resolve is not an exact science and can produce irregular results from time to time. So please take these readings with a grain of salt. What this test does provide is a real world example of what is required to colour correct the image to a pleasing colour balance. At 5600 Kelvin, I found the image to be a little warmer in the whites than I would typically like, and I found that pushing the temperature closer to 6500 Kelvin to produce a cleaner image. This was evident in the white point reading of the image as the RGB values indicated the various color shifts at each incremental stage. We found this light to be perfectly suited as a deep background light for our project with Tier Australia, due to its long, wide throw providing shadows of a similar nature to that of a HMI, which for this shoot provided a great ambience. The compact size was an added luxury for transport and setup, and even after a full night's use, the unit stayed well away from the sort of heat you would typically experience with a tungsten unit. However, the biggest advantage of this light was most definitely its draw to output ratio. As power was our biggest concern in this remote environment, being able to run 10 times the number of lights to that of a traditional 2K Blondie allowed us the flexibility to be far more creative with our lighting setup. Unfortunately, being a rainforest, it rained all night, and as a result, we ended up running on a minimal Plan B setup that resulted in a darker lighting plan in order to avoid backlighting the rain. However, despite the weather, these lights again surpassed our expectations by taking on the elements and surviving a full night in the rain with only a plastic bag to shelter them. Since shooting with Tier Australia, we have used these lights on several corporate videos, fashion shoots and formal interviews and have found it to be an extremely versatile and flexible light. For us, it's worked best bounce from a bounce board or a solid white surface in order to provide an even soft light for most shoots. For interview setups, there is some fan noise that is emitted from the unit's cooling system. Yet it's similar in tone to that of an air conditioner and consistent enough to remove with some simple noise reduction software. Overall, we found the Gembay EF200 to be a fantastic alternative to traditional lighting units and would highly recommend you visit protog.com.au to find out more. Until next time, I'm Daniel Wickman from Kantara Studios and thanks for watching.